Who the hell designed this? It's like I'm trying to break into Fort Knox. The JK01 is the cheapest mini PC on the planet with a current Jasper Lake CPU. The best thing is, it doesn't suck, and it's only 129 US dollars. I bought the bare bones unit, which still needs memory and storage, but you get a free HDMI cable and blindingly bright RGB lighting, so that evens it all out, right? The JK01 features a quad core N59.5 Intel CPU, which is a modest offering with cutback UHD graphics compared to the higher end Celeron and Pentium processors in this budget range. It still holds up surprisingly well for everyday tasks. Once I hit the buy button, I was asked if I wanted my Mini with a SATA M.2 or NVMe slot. You can buy a fully pre-built Mini if you don't want to put one together yourself. Which isn't a bad idea actually. I don't believe this shit. IO on this Mini is a little different to the norm. Power button, dual USB 3 and 2, micro SD card reader, audio and microphone jack. On the back is a gigabit LAN, dual USB 3, VGA port, which is my favourite, HDMI and DisplayPort, and the barrel jack connector. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is a soldered on Realtek 8821CE chip. Opening the unit is ridiculous. First you have to rip off the feet, which are glued on. Then you've got four screws, and then you've got to try and get the lid off without snapping the plastic. There are two latches on the side holding onto it, even though four screws already hold it in place just fine. I think the designer might be better off with a career change. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> customers suck. What a difference compared to the AMR5 I reviewed a few videos ago. Once you do manage to force it open, putting it together is like every other mini. I've paired it with 2666MHz memory and an NVMe SSD for storage. No drivers were provided, so I've uploaded them myself and linked them in the video description. When I turned on the JK01, I was blinded by all the colours of the rainbow blasting into my eyeballs. As I stared into it for 5 minutes and fell into the abyss, my only thought was, why do we keep doing this to ourselves? Luckily, you can shut it off by pulling this plug. I'm free! The RGB is too bright, too fast, constantly changes, and is not user configurable. Or is it? No, no it isn't. At least if it was tied to the CPU temperature or something, it might have been slightly more useful. Okay, let's look at some benchmarks. I'm pitching this unit against the pricier Celeron and Pentium units. Single core performance in Cinebench is almost the same as the Celeron N5105. In multi-core, the JK01 beat it by 12%. I guess that's what a higher TDP will do for you. Passmark also picked the JK01 over the N5105. Gaming performance on the other hand takes a hit. If you like an extra challenge, try playing Hades on this mini. That'll really put your gaming skills to the test. And the benchmarks show the JK01's UHD graphics with fewer execution units has it far behind the rest. Well, let's check out its video playback performance. Not a frame was dropped playing a 4K movie using VLC. I tried YouTube at 4K, and apart from a few frames dropped at the beginning, when the player is expanded to full screen, no frames were dropped either. Next, I tried a 4K 60fps video, and frames dropped faster than the Hindenburg. What, too soon? At 1440p 60fps, it drops a frame or two every few seconds, so still not great. A video encoding test has the JK01 also in last place. So it's a capable media player if you don't go for 60fps media at the higher resolutions. The integrated graphics not only hold it back for gaming, but also for emulators, which limits the range. PlayStation Portable games run mostly fine, with the integrated graphics being the bottleneck, so the resolution scale is really important. Dreamcast holds up pretty well, with some frame drops depending on the title. Again, due to the integrated graphics. The Dolphin emulator kept crashing with Direct3D 12 renderer, so I had to drop it down to 11. Some GameCube games can run at double resolution scale and still hold a locked 60fps. 
Others can't even hold 30 unless it native res. Nintendo Wii games run pretty well at native res, but any higher and the frame rate falls to pieces. Power draw is low as expected, and the max CPU temperature recorded at 21C was 75 degrees, which is good. It's a very quiet mini PC, even under load. I didn't have any hardware issues during my tests, and the cheapest mini I've ever bought isn't a stinker. So I'm really happy about that. For a cheap desktop PC, media player, or retro gaming box, the JK01 comes recommended. Just rip that LED cable out once you've managed to open the damn lid. You'll thank me later. Well that's all for this one guys. As always, I appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed it, and plenty more mini PC content in the future. Cheers.